Order. All rise. Be seated, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 1168, Ordonez versus Curry Clausen. Thank you. You're welcome. Ordonez. Yes. You bought one dog from one of these gentlemen in 2019. Yes. From which gentleman? I had actually bought it from um, both gentlemen, their um, business, BHB. They presented it to me as an entity, so I paid Ethan and Just a second. Cooper. Your complaint says that in September 2019, I bought a puppy named Dolly from Ethan. Yes. So can we keep it simple and consistent with what you wrote here? Uh, it should have been BHB. Well, it's not BHB. BHB is a corporation that cannot appear in court without a lawyer. When they had sold me the dog, they had presented it as a, a real company. So mm -hmm. I had... Um, can I see the paperwork? Yes. So when I received... Um, oh, don't say anything. Just give me the paperwork. Do you have her, a copy of her contract? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. They had withheld the papers, so I wasn't able to see anything. It was Michelle Montfort. It was uh, my married name. I put a O on top for Ordonez. But when I paid her off, I should have been given the UKC papers, which don't I Don't tell me shoulda, woulda, coulda. I don't care shoulda, woulda, coulda. This says that you paid $2,000 for the dog. Yes. And 50%... Breeding rights. Breeding rights. Which meant that... You're just not really germane to this case, but it means that if you breed the dog, that I assume that whoever is Ethan, yes. that would be you, you have 50% breeding rights, which means that you get to breed the dog once and she does, or you get 50% of the litter. What does that mean? So it means I would split the stud fee with her, go half with it, and then I would get half of the litter. So let's say she had 10 puppies, I would get five and be able to sell them. Well, you have to make that clear. That's, okay. not what it, that's not what this means to me. With regard to Dolly, and you still have Dolly. Yes, I do. Yes. We're going to get rid of your counterclaim because your counterclaim is for the return of a co-owned dog, right? Yes. You don't co-own this dog. It's not a co-ownership agreement, so that takes care of your counterclaim. There's nothing in this contract that suggests that you co-own the dog. Good. Now, Dolly is still alive. Yes, gladly. <laughs> this is... Your last name is? Curry. Curry. And are you partners? Yes. You also sold the plaintiff a second dog. Yes. That wasn't in 2019, that was in 2021. Yes. And you two became friends. We've been friends for a, a long time. How long? I want to say since I got Dolly, maybe a couple uh, months before so that. 2019. Yes. That's a year and a half. I was by the defendant to buy a dog as a friend. You bought another dog. Yes. From Pim. Same breed. Same breed. And they're? From the same kennel. Um, it's actually um, his uh, long Now, just tell me, what kind of dog is it? Oh, it's an XL bully, American bully. Is that a pit bull breed? It's a, a pit bull mixed with a Staffordshire Terrier. So they're quite, they're probably about this tall. And they get up to about 160 males, probably like 170. Okay. And so now you have two. You have one that's two years old and you have a new puppy. Yes. You also... Well, the, the, we, the, the puppy is deceased. I know that. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I know that the puppy is deceased. Well, that's what your case is about. Yes. You became friendly with Mr. Curry. Both of them, actually. Just try not to interrupt me again. Sorry. And you were moving. You were moving with whom? Uh, with my children and my husband at the time. How many children do you two, have? Two sons. And you had a husband? Yes. And so you were... Moving from where to where? So we were moving actually into an apartment because our home was Don't tell built. me uh, because you were moving from where to where? From my home to an apartment. Were you renting the home? Uh, at the time, yes, I was. What month and year were you moving? I moved in the 
beginning of August, the end of July. What date were you planning on moving? I was trying to move the 1st of August, but it so happened that I moved a little bit earlier. Was Mr. Curry supposed to move into your house? Yes. Is that the arrangement that you had made with him? Yes. And was he going to pay you rent? He was going to be paying partial rent, yes. How much rent? At the time, I think I told him 1600 How much? She told me 1800 I gave 900 upon my deposit and the next... When did you give her the $900 deposit? Uh, about a week or two prior to me moving in. There is no on contract. What date? On what date? There is no contract, it was just... I, just to say, I didn't say contract. I never used the word contract. Okay. You said deposit. Deposit, yes. On what date were you supposed to be moving in? Uh, I believe it was around the... Don't 20... say I won't believe. 26th just of th July was around approximately. Upon getting there, she was still there and her kids. Now, you also have one of these dogs. I have three. All the same breed? Yes, ma'am. All American bullies? Yes, ma'am. You got yourself and all three dogs? Two live with my mom and one live with me. So you had one? Yeah, at the time. That you were moving into the house with? At the time, yes. That's all I care about. What do I care about the rest of your life? I don't even care about this portion of your life, but I'm, it's my job. So you were moving into this house that she was vacating with one dog? Yes. That's an answer. Okay. I don't care how many cats or dogs or canaries your mother has. Well, I own them. I don't care. That was your question, Your Honor. I don't care. You had one dog that is relevant to this case that moved into her house. Correct. Sick dog. Now, what did I tell you? Sorry. It's getting towards the end of the day. I'm getting testy. Your family may care about you. I, on the other hand, have an idiot who was given specific instructions not to have their dog around other dogs and you specifically didn't listen. Michelle Ordonez claims her friends, Cooper Curry and Ethan Clausen, owe for the cost of a puppy and vet bills. Now, the dog was sick. Uh, she had just been released from the vet, so she was no longer sick. Just a second. The dog's name is? Uh, Carmela. What was wrong with her? Uh, she had had parvo. When you say she had just been released from the vet, what was the name of the vet who cared for her? Animal Kingdom. Is that the regular vet? Yes, ma'am. How long was Carmela at the vet? Three days. When she left the vet after three days, she had been diagnosed with parvo. What were her symptoms? Um, she was just groggy and not very uh, dog-like. I don't know how to explain it. She wasn't loving, she was just sickly. What was she like when you took her out of the vet? Um, the vet called me and... Don't tell me what the vet told you. Get her. D d don't tell me what the vet told you. The dog was in prime condition to come home. The dog seemed fine. Yes. And if I called Animal Kingdom, you have that number? Yes, ma'am. They would tell me that the dog was released and had been tested and was free from parvo. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Sarah, mm -hmm. do this for me, please. Take that number, go in the roving room, call Animal Kingdom. Tell them that you're calling from Judge Judy Scheinlin. We're calling about Cooper Curry's dog, Carmella, that was released from Animal Kingdom end of July of this year. The dog had had parvo. Would you find out from the vet whether the dog was free from parvo when the dog was released from the vet? Sure. Would you do that? Thank you. If you have any problem with them, I'll let, you. let me know. Mr. Curry was supposed to move in to your home, and you were supposed to be out of your home. We were in the process of moving, yes. Mr. Curry came to your house with his dog. Mm -hmm. Did you have a conversation with him? He actually came did... unannounced, and no, I did not have a conversation with him at, before he came. Did he ever discuss with you that his dog had had parvo? He told Look me... at me. No, he did, did not. He... No, did you? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Yes, he did. I'm going to ask you again. Did he ever discuss with you that his dog had parvo? Make sure I get an answer. Right. No, he did not. Okay. So you have two of the same kind of dogs. 
and you wouldn't have left your dog around a dog that looked sick. Never. That looked sick, correct? Correct. So his dog didn't look sick? No. Played with your dogs? Yes. I even asked him to watch now, the dog. I know that. Played with your dogs? Mm -hmm. Appeared healthy. Correct. And that was on what date? July what? I want to say the, from the 24th through the 25th. So you had a full day to see them interacting and to see how his dog was behaving. Correct. And then you left. And you left him with your two dogs. Yes. So you left him on the 25th with your two dogs. That was by arrangement. Yes, I asked him permission if I could leave. Leave the dogs. Fair. And when did you come and get the dogs? The next day, within the, uh, the next day, he had called me and said the dogs will not stop, uh, excuse my language, and throwing up everywhere. So that's the 26th? Yes. So you came back the 26th? Correct. And I picked up both dogs. She didn't, Your Honor. When did she come back? Her baby daddy picked them up, and it was about two or three days later. Her baby what? My baby's father. Her baby's father. My yes. ex-husband. Okay. I'm and she would not answer the phone for two or three days. So she didn't come the next day? No. And neither did anyone else? No. I had a housekeeper come and clean the house of all their throw up and poop while they were ignoring my calls. That's funny. I had a housekeeper. Okay. Do you have any... Do you have your phone with you, which would show the messages? On I actually got a new phone. Everybody gets a new phone when I ask them for proof. I got a new phone. My phone fell in the pool. It fell in the toilet. The dog ate the phone. My husband smashed the phone. My wife threw it out of the car. Whenever you came, the next day, the day after, did you come personally or did you send the father of your baby? So he was threatening. Just to answer the, the father question. Of my child went to go pick up the dogs. Okay. And when you went to get the dogs, did you take them immediately to the vet? I took them the next day. Why next didn't you morning. take them that day? Because I didn't know the severity of what was going on. They looked groggy, but I didn't know exactly if they were sick or not. So I had were set they, up the appointment both, for the next. Were both dogs fully inoculated? At first, they were just acting like themselves, no, and then they just started deteriorating. Just, listen to my question. Were both dogs fully inoculated, vaccinated. Had they received yes, they all were. of their shots? They were. You have proof from the vet from that? Uh, from the vet, yes. I have her vet records and her vet bill. OK, now I want to see the records of her inoculation, the one that died. Now, don't give me all of those things. I asked you for a specific piece of paper. That's her, or that's his vet records that I got from the vet. No, I, that's not what I asked you for. I asked you for her records of vaccination. That, that's the only records I had gotten. Then you don't have... The answer is that you don't have records of that puppy. That was the puppy that died. How old was the puppy? Um, when he um, died, he was about 14 weeks. He was 14 weeks. Sarah? Uh, yeah, got a lot of information. OK. So Carmela was diagnosed on 7-12-21 with not only parvo, but intestinal parasites as well. <laughs> and she had a hospital stay until approximately the 14th in hospital where she was treated and picked up. And then there was a revisit with a strict instruction to not be around any other dogs as it was still a highly contagious disease. She revisited on August 23rd for her second vaccine. August 23rd. Of 20, of 2021. That's his dog. Yes. August 23rd. For a revisit after the hospital stay where she received her second vaccine, which was a combo vaccine, including for Parvo, with again, another instruction not to be around any other puppies or dogs and not to purchase any more puppies and dogs until she was revisited. But there was no negative test result when she left. For no negative. She said there would not have been a negative test result, but she but, left with the second but, dose of the vaccine and the strict instruction to not, not be, be around, around other, other dogs. dogs. Uh, Your Honor, I was homeless, and she was allowing me I to I don't do care that. whether you were homeless, <laughs> hapless, sad, snowflake. I don't care. It's irrelevant to me. Do you understand? Yeah. Homeless maybe, maybe, can get maybe just arrested. a second. Hey, I'm going to throw your case Sorry. out. Do you want me to do that?
She wasn't supposed to be. She was there, fool. She was not supposed she to was be there. there. Listen, no, you don't understand. You, listen to you me. don't understand. She wasn't no, supposed I'm to be I'm supposed there. to listen Whoa. to you. I'm supposed to listen to him. Oh, yeah. Cut off his mic. Michelle Ordonez has accused her former friend, Cooper Curry, of bringing his sick puppy into her home and giving her dogs a serious illness. Now, I don't know if you have family. Your family may care about you. I, on the other hand, do not. I, on the other hand, have an idiot who was given specific instructions not to have their dog around other dogs, and you specifically didn't listen. And whether you're homeless or not, who gives a rat's behind? Well, I paid rent to move into her house, and I was supposed to be moving in, and she I don't care there. if you move in. You're not going to give her dog Parvo. She wasn't supposed to be there. It doesn't matter. It does. She was. She wasn't she supposed was to be there. there. She wasn't supposed to be. She was there. She wasn't fool. supposed to be. She was there, fool. She was not supposed she to was be there. there. Listen. No, you don't understand. You listen to you me. Don't she wasn't no, supposed I'm to be supposed there. To listen to you. I'm supposed to listen to him. Oh, yeah. Cut off his God. mic. <laughs> He's not only homeless, maybe homeless, maybe a little high, maybe a little stupid. I'm not exactly sure which one. All three. Maybe all three. You were told by the vet not to have your dog around other dogs. Do you understand that? You understand that? Yes. And when you're told, not to have your dog around other dogs and you're supposed to be a dog lover, then whether she's there or not there, if she's there, she's got her dogs there, you're not supposed to take your dog near her dogs. That's what you were told, that it's a highly contagious disease. Don't take your dog near other dogs. That's what you were told. Can I see your vet bills, please? You have anything else to do with this case anymore? I already dismissed your counterclaim. You can sit down. So this is for um, each treatment for. I her just want to. I just want the total amount of your vet bills. How much did you pay him for that? For the dog that died. Three thousand dollars. Wasn't paid off either. How much did you actually pay him of the three thousand dollars? Show me. Uh, there's, we did a cash exchange, but on here it says, I have a text message that says I paid for the dog. Okay. I'm looking. So is what you're telling me the entire vet bill for both dogs was $303? No. Well, I'm, that, that was for uh, each treatment for each dog. You say for each dog. This doesn't say for each dog. If you call the vet. Then... I'm not calling the vet. Your responsibility is to bring me proof. Right. This isn't proof. You're suing for vet bills. So far, the only vet bill I have is for $303.50. No, excuse me. It was $478.50. You paid $175. The balance is $303. Did you ever pay them? Uh, no. Uh, no. So you actually only paid $175. Now I'd like to see the text showing me that you paid him the $3,000 for the dog. I have her papers, or his papers. I listen to it. Stop talking. I asked you for a specific thing. I said, show me the text that you refer to when you say you paid him the $3,000 for the dog. It's not specific on there, but he says that I there, owned I, the dog. I can read. You said you had a text. I'm reading it. You paid for her as a pet and co-own, but I'm primary owner on papers. Well, Ethan is technically, you're Ethan, right? Yes. <laughs> so that's you who's writing this. No, it's you, Cooper actually writing that. I, yeah, I said. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're Ethan, so it's Cooper writing this. So, yes, sorry. Listen, try to shut up. Yeah, you breached the contract, laugh out loud. I've had my attorneys on this all day. Your attorneys, you're homeless and hapless. <laughs> Okay, three thousand plus one seventy-five, three thousand one hundred and seventy-five dollars. I'm also demanding her papers because I had paid for her and I never oh, received her papers. I'm not dealing with papers. First of all, you only need papers for a dog if you intend to breed her. Correct. Right. Yes. And you don't want anything further to do with them. Right? Never. So I would have her neutered. 
That honestly, that that's that a was very good cool. idea. That's what you say in here. She's a pet, and I want to. So that's what I would do. So you don't need papers for her. That, that Three thousand one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you very much. Thank you. Court is adjourned. She knew my dog had parvo. She knew my dog wasn't supposed to be around dogs. She just lied to the judge about that. I would have never let him in my home if I knew he had parvo or the dog had parvo. By letting me come into a house with a sick dog and her knowing it, that's negligence on her part. You know, I opened my doors to him and he opened his parvo disease onto my animals. She never came through to get the dog. I don't know why she said one to two days because it was more like three to four. You know, justice is going to come either way. If it's not from me, it's from someone else. The vet was very helpful on the phone. I asked her if he took the dog discharged with a negative test, and she said, well, that's not exactly how that works, and explained to me how she gave strict instructions on both occasions that he brought in the dog to not have that dog be around any other dogs because it's highly contagious. And not only that, but also she said not to purchase any new dogs for him to, to acquire any more dogs due to the contagious nature of the disease. So. Very helpful. You know, sometimes in the past I would have made that call myself. I have to tell you, it was delightful <laughs> for you to get that information mm -hmm. and be able to convey it to me. And decisive, actually. Yeah. Very decisive. You know, one would think if you're discharged from a vet's office that you're okay, but clearly not. Just discharged I, from the hospital stay that yeah. she was in. The dog was in the hospital. Uh, she said around two or three days but that it was a fairly young dog so that she recovered quite quickly from her symptoms. However, that did not take away from the contagious nature, nature of the disease. Sad. Well, yeah. one puppy died. If you can't take care of yourself, don't get a 160-pound dog. Good that advice. Would, yeah. <laughs> Are you a victim of a scam? Go to judyjustice.tv. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 1133, Edwards versus Griffin Hicks. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Edwards, you purchased a second-hand customized motorbike from the defendants. Yes, ma'am. You purchased it understanding that it was used, that it had been used either by one of the defendants or their children. No, ma'am. When you bought a used one, what was your understanding? Who had it been used by? Well, what I was told was that the bike was made for her, but that she didn't get a chance to ride it. So she phrased it to me as though the bike had never been used. It was just an extra bike that her husband, Ray, had created. Okay. Let's get back to, where did you meet them? IHOP. And you must have seen them riding these bikes. Yeah, they were at, at, at IHOP with the bikes. How many? I would say in total about five. And they were all similar but different. They were yeah. all custom. But yeah. they didn't look like the usual bicycle no, that you ride. So they were different. Yes, ma'am. And you liked them. And who did you start the conversation with? Mr. Griffin. What did you say to him and what did he say to you? I asked him, you know, did you create this? He said yes. And then he went on to tell me that he made custom bikes. And they are dual, meaning that you can pedal and that you can use the motor. So I thought that that was fascinating. And I asked him about the patent. I went in to ask him about, you know, what all it entails, the parts. And so I told him I wanted one for my baby's birthday that was coming up. How old is your child? She's 15. So you said, I'd like to buy one from you. Did he tell you how much it was? He told me that it was four fifty dollars initially. And I went with that price. I'm like, okay, good, you know. Okay, so he said it was $450. Yes, ma'am. And then what happened? Then I asked him whether I could speak to his wife about setting up to buy the bike. After that, that was the last conversation that I had with Mr. Griffin. I only spoke to the wife after that. Okay. He was going to make you a new customized bike for $450. He just said custom bike. He never said that it was used. She never implied that it was used <laughs> until we got into the text message conversation. Okay. Well, then let me see the first text message that you had. The first text message that I had, they didn't initially print it out, but this is the conversation. So this... 
This is her uh, contacting me to see if I was still interested in the bike. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I don't understand this message. What's next? This is the warranty that we spoke of. Oh, I don't want to hear the oh, warranty. Okay, you I'm want the tape back, messages. I'm back in $450 okay. for a new customized bike. Yes, ma'am. It's in my phone. So get it from your phone, unless we can agree on it. You said they build your new one for four fifty, and you say in your complaint that you paid them five fifty. No, that was the initial price was the four fifty, but I ended up paying five fifty for the bike in total. Why? Because he told me that the extra, the labor for the bike was a hundred dollars, and the base price of the bike was four fifty. Here okay. it is. Great. I'm going to see it. So you reached a price of five hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, ma'am. For this bike. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, this is back and forth bartering. You finally agreed to pay him five hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, ma'am. For the bike. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did he deliver the bike? Yes, ma'am. When did he deliver the bike? The day before her birthday on August thirty-first. You have a picture of the bike? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you accepted the bike in your home? I accepted it outside and then I, I pulled it into the garage. And then we discussed the handles and all of the gadgets on it. And then he... So, okay, so he explained how to drive it. No, he just explained to me which one was the gear. And he just went through and told me what's gear, what these parts are, where I need to flip this or change this. And he explained to you how to drive it? No, he didn't explain to me how to drive it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm telling you, he explained to you, Miss Edwards, how to drive it. <laughs> You may not want to put it that way, but I'm telling you, he explained to you how to yes. drive it. Yes, Your Honor. Right. So after he explained to me, he got on it and he rode it four houses down and came back. Okay, so he showed you how to turn it on. You watched him. I mean, he didn't ride around the block because he wanted a scenic view of where you live. He rode around with the bike so that you saw that it worked. Yes, ma'am. And he showed you the different gears and you watched him how he started it. No, I didn't... Uh, well, didn't then you should have watched him how he started it. Yes, ma'am. And he drove it around so that you could see that it rode around the block. And then what happened? So when he came back from riding it and we discussed with Dana on the open line, a three-way call, Dana was initially supposed to show my daughter how to ride it. That was her offer. It wasn't something I asked for. So when he heard that, he was like, well, I have to go to work now, but I'll come back the next day and I'll show her. Okay, great. So he said, I'll come back the next day and show your daughter how to ride it. And that would have been September 1st. Yes, ma'am. How did it get into the garage? I, I pulled it. Um... And then you put the stick down so it wouldn't fall over? Yeah, he initially told me about the stick because it was so loose, the bike couldn't stand straight up. And he told me that when he came back to show her how to ride, that he would tighten it. And so from that point, I just leaned it up against the wall because I knew it wouldn't stand on the leg that it was on because it was loose. Okay. Do you remember that? Not at all. Not at all. I have to tell you, you have to be careful, Mr. Griffith, because there are certain things that are important and certain things that aren't important. Right. Certain little details, because if somebody tells me something that is a minute detail, but doesn't really have bearing on the case, like the stick that holds the bike was loose and you said you would fix it, that's not something that somebody would make up because it really doesn't have anything to do with the case. So if you're going to say no to everything before you actually think about it, I'm not going to believe a lot of what you say. Do you understand? I understand. Great. So understanding that there's a certain veracity in that little detail which really isn't important, you want to think again whether you said to her, I'll fix that when I come back and show your daughter how to ride the bike? I actually told her I was coming back, but throughout the week, I have told her... No, just... You told her you were coming back to show her daughter That's how to Saturday. ride the bike. Did you tell her you would tighten the stick that allowed... Nothing's wrong with the bike. I didn't say there was anything wrong with the bike. This little stick here, I don't know what you call it's that. Kickstand. Kickstand. It works. Mm -hmm. We have a picture it's of... It's a brand new bike. May I see that? That's the bike, the actual bike in her garage using the kickstand that she said isn't working. 
You took this picture on September 1st. No, she did. That's a screenshot. That she took. She took it and she sent it to me. And what she's saying to you in this screenshot is that there's a problem with oil? Yes. So she's showing you the bike that's not leaning against anything. Correct. It's leaning on the kickstand. Now I know what it's called. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a horse of a different color. Mm hmm. Early on this process, Kimberly shared that she was interested in having a relationship with me. And so early on this- You're not paying attention, and I would pay attention instead early, of looking, I, I instead of looking. Kimberly Edwards is suing bike sellers, Ray Griffin and Dana Hicks for the cost of a custom motorized bike. Miss Edwards, you want to take a look at this? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. What you can see, if I may show the judge, is where that bag is sitting, it's leaning up against the chair. It's on the chair, leaned up against the chair because it won't stand up. Here's another picture where I had to put the kickstand inside of the pan to I make it stand up. So what you're saying is that the bicycle is actually leaning up against this heavy bag and it doesn't have its weight on the kickstand. Yes, it doesn't. Okay. And when you sent it to her on September 1st, you sent it to the defendants showing them that there was an oil or gas leak from the bike. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what you told her then was, I made it in April. I don't know. My wife didn't like it. Nobody ever used it. I actually talked to her in regards to the bike. Well, he says that it was never ridden. It wasn't by me. I didn't like I, it. You didn't like it? I didn't like the who, motorbike. Who wrote it? When Ray built the bikes, he don't build the bikes and, and give it straight to the customer or whoever it is because it's a motor and they rattle, you know? So once he put the bolts and everything on it, he test ride it for a few miles or whatnot, just to try it That's out and fine. make sure. So he was the only person that tested the bike out when it was So given. nobody else rode the bike Not except even you. Myself. She sent you this picture the day or within 24 hours of getting possession of the bike. Which, before the picture, she called me. She said, Ray told me to lift up, because when you finish riding the bike, there's an off switch, which stops the gas from flowing down, right? It's an easy little off and on. So she said, I don't know what Ray told me. And I was messing with it, and now it's leaking. I said, oh, that's an easy fix. Don't worry that's about it. And so I said, let me call Ray on three-way so that he could just tell you how to fix it. So we went about, and I asked her to send me the picture so I can see exactly where the bike was leaking. So that's basically what happened. She sent the picture, then we tried video calling her. Her video kept cutting off. So that's when I told her, I said, it's an easy fix, we'll be out between Friday and Sunday. And then? After that conversation, me and her talked. And so early on this... You're not paying attention, and I would pay attention instead early, of looking, I, I instead of looking. I apologize. Early on this process, Kimberly uh, shared that she was interested in having a relationship with me. So, like, through all this process... She's... I don't... Listen to me. I don't care about Understood, that. Understood, but... No, just listen to me. Then stop talking. Mm -hmm. I don't care about that. Right. Do you agree that you just told me that this leaking gas or mm -hmm. oil is an easy fix? Yes. Is that what you said? Yes. And is there any reason that you do not believe her when she says that since you dropped the bike off mm -hmm. on September 1st or August 31st, I don't care what date right. it was, that nobody has ridden it. I believe she uh, rode it or tried to ride it. Either she did or her daughter. Because Correct. when Ray left, he cut the gas off. Just a second. Did either you or your daughter ride the bike? Mm -hmm. No. Very, very easy. Can I see this warranty that you're talking about? Well, this is a warranty. This says 
what I've experienced since we've been doing this, as long as she puts the gas in it correctly, it will run good. In the future, if any parts need to be fixed, just let me know and I'll work on it. Well, something needs to be fixed. And I did. Just a sec. Yes. I'll work just something a out with you, not work on it. I'll work, well, let me see the rest of That's it. That's her tick. It stops and I'll work. Oh, okay. I'll work something out for you, but that should be no time soon. Okay, so what he's saying to you is this isn't a guarantee that you get your money back. This says, in the future, if any parts need to be fixed, just let me know and I'll work something out for you. The, That's not a warranty. I was never saying it was a warranty for fixing whatever w would be wrong, but I didn't expect well, anything to be wrong the day of. Well, so I don't, this I don't know what you expected, madam. I expected just to get a bike I, that was well, working properly. Well, it was working properly because according to you, he rode it up and down the block. He has to go out and fix it. And you have to tell him when you want him to come out and fix it. So That was his warranty. You're not getting your money back. No, I wanted to show you what they said to me. Just a minute, if it's something different from what this is, mm -hmm. okay. You want to show me something else? Also. Otherwise, show, just show me. She said that I told her that my daughter's birthday was September the 2nd. This is me telling her in text messages my baby's birthday was September the 1st. I don't care. It's not important. But it's just the aspect I don't that she lies. I don't, I don't care. September 1st to September 2nd is not important to me or this case. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. He said they would come out and fix it. We already told you Friday or Saturday. That's the thing. On the phone call that me and, yeah, and, and Ms. Devine had. Okay, he has to come out and fix it within one week. What date do you want him to come out and fix the bike? I don't want the bike. Well, then, then, because then it's you a can, fight then you can sell. Then you can sell it. It's your bike. What I'm telling you is he agreed to come out and fix the bike. This that, is what they told me. Can I present this? They told you me. You can show me something else. The, this, right now I'm reading what the two things that you okay. gave me. Judge. May I see what she gave you? No. Okay. So far, you're not losing. You have to be I quiet. Know. I'm sorry. I'm just curious. Because I don't. Oh, say fluffy, but he said the lights were extra. I don't. What does this have to do with what we're talking about? No, that is him after the fact of me asking them and waiting for them to come on Friday, which is what she told me over just the phone. A, they never came. Hand, and then this is her blowing. I will blowing cash me up off. you. Just a list. I will cash up you tomorrow. The remaining in cash, okay, that, that was works. prior to him coming well, to my home. Do you understand? I'm not interested in all no, of this. I know. So don't give it to me. Just because you give me a lot of paper doesn't confuse me. It wasn't a bike that you bought at Schwinn. You take pieces from a bike. He didn't create the metal. He didn't create the wheels. He put together different parts He just of told bike. me that it was a creator of the bike. And he was not oh, the creator please. of the bike. You, you don't look like a stupid woman. Kimberly Edwards has accused bike sellers Ray Griffin and Dana Hicks of refusing to refund the cost of a custom motorized bike. Ray says Kimberly rejected his offer to fix the bike for free. You were supposed to give me a piece of paper that suggested that there was some sort of a refund warranty other than he would come out and fix it. No, that's initially just Shylin. What I wanted him to do was come and fix the bike, but when they refused and they didn't show up on Friday, I wanted my money back. Just a second. On what date are you going to go out and fix the bike? Uh, it would be on like a, a week. Not before. a like. What date are you going to fix the bike? The following, when is it? on the 22nd. 22nd. On the 22nd of? It would have to be Okay, I'm, I'm 23rd. sorry, 23rd. I'm making it up. 23rd afternoon. Just don't talk about making this up. Just be quiet. That's yes, a Friday. Listen to me. From what jurisdiction do you come? Harris County. Where is that? Houston, Texas. And as part of your appearance here, you get an appearance fee. Correct. Have you received that yet? No, ma'am. You're not going to until the bike is fixed. No, do you problem. understand? Understood. So when the bike is fixed, that's when you'll get your check. Do we understand each other? Understood. Give me the date that you will be there to fix the bike. October 23rd. What time? Do you not want him to come and fix the bike? That's gonna make my life that's, easier. I that's been gonna, an issue. I wasn't gonna disagree. I was just gonna say my daughter's in athletics, so the time frame would have to be before she gets out so that I won't run into going to get her and them trying to so fix just the bike. So just a sec. Tell me what time is no good for you. After three. Okay, you have to be there before three o'clock. So I would say pick a day when you can be there at noon. So let's try Sunday, October 24th. It can't be a Sunday. We work. Just a second. <laughs>
What days of the week do you work? He I work Monday through Sunday. Doing one of them that I ran into. Off on Saturdays, but... You're off on Saturday. Right, as of right now, I work for a repossession agency. What I'm telling you is... Pick a day we before did. 12 o'clock. you understand we picked you two days? Going, we no, no, no. changing No, no, no. She said she has to pick her daughter up from school That's... after 3 o'clock. So you have to come That's before 3 o'clock. That's a Saturday. What's a Saturday? The day the we gave you was a Saturday. Saturday. Uh -huh. yes. Great. I'm going to give you a date. I, I'm just... I want to let you know, my daughter has away games. That's why I'm saying that they can't fix it after 3 or in between that time on a Saturday because she's away. So I'm away with her. It has to be Monday through Friday before 12, before well, 3. Well, that's unreasonable if you exactly. want the bike fix. Get somebody else there at the house to stay at your house and watch the bike. That was the whole problem initially, Judge well, Rollins, because that, he didn't want to come... He didn't want to come those time, that, that particular time. He kept putting it off. We never put it off. Let me explain You put something. it off. Let me explain something to you. Yes, yes, Judge. That's the date, the 23rd at 12 o'clock. If you want the 23rd, it can be at 3 o'clock. What's your pleasure? That's fine. The 20, what? The 23rd. At what time? Before 3 or 12. 12 noon on October 23rd. Yes. You're going to be there and fix the bike. I will be there. Very good. And if the bike still doesn't work, because he and I suggest you have your daughter there to drive it around, free to come back. Put your hand down. Do you understand? Mm. You bought a bike that was put together. It wasn't a bike that you bought at Schwinn. He misled me into thinking that he was the creator of the bike. Thank you. Thank you. Court is adjourned. I'm going to give him a chance to fix the bike, um, and we'll go from there, but I respect her decision. I definitely think something happened, um, because when we delivered the bike, Ray cut the, the gas off. So for it to leak after the fact is something that she had to do. It was so disappointing, the aspect that I did it the day before I prepared, I paid, and then to get a damaged bike. So for everybody out there, don't buy a so-called created custom bikes. But regardless to whether she tampered with it or not, I still agree to coming out and helping her. That's all that mattered. I just think that's his character of trying to escape the aspect that he had to fix it. I sell these things, so it's, it's behind my name. And now the fact that he has to fix it, you know, this is where I wanted it to be. So I respect it. You know, it's just only fair. Like, OK, that's fine. You know, even though you created the problem, we can help you fix it. It's not that serious. You know, my mom has an electric bike like that that's a dual purpose. You can ride it like a regular bike or motorized. So I know she has that, but this bike seemed a bit more makeshift with all these parts. I'm just curious how it all fits together. I saw the photo and I still don't really understand how that all that's works. That's why they say that they custom make it. They probably <laughs> yeah. take pieces from different pieces kinds of, of bikes. discarded bikes and sort of cobble them together. Good for maybe an art piece for me. I don't know if I would ride something like well, that. Clearly, they wrote it. They wrote it to IHOP. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's where she saw it. In any event, the plaintiff clearly knew that this was cobbled together. Mm -hmm. It may have been their original design, but they didn't create wheels and yeah. spokes and motors and things. They put them together out they of... They weren't in so manufacturing. They weren't, they weren't manufacturers. And he came. She said he rode the bike. Mm -hmm. He rode to show her it was operable. He rode up and down the block several times. So the bike was clearly operable. I really don't know what happened after he left. I can hardly imagine that the daughter didn't see that bike and didn't say, gee, I'd love to take it for a spin myself. She put it in the garage, that sort of outside the realm of possibility for a 15-year-old, mm -hmm. that she didn't try it. Anyway, he's got to fix it, yeah. and he said he would, and I believe that he will. Want justice? Go to judyjustice.tv. Hello, Judge. How are you? Case number 1163, Gangley versus Benera. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, Miss Gangley. Interesting story. You were moving from Arizona to California? Correct. And you had a friend. I assume this was the mutual friend? I have a very good friend. A friend of his is also 
Who was this? This is my sister. You knew the defendant through a mutual friend. Exactly. You were moving from Arizona to California with a son who was how old? 15. And according to you, you wanted him to go to a good school, and you found out through this mutual friend that the defendant had an apartment in California in an area where you wanted to live. You came to look at the apartment, and you came to look at the apartment, I believe, in June of this year. Correct. And you liked the apartment. Yes. And you settled on a rent. Yes. You negotiated the price of the rent. He wanted more. You wanted to pay less. How much was he asking? Originally? He was asking, uh, I believe, thirty-seven fifty. Is that what you were asking, sir? No, I said I was asking forty-five, and I said because she's sir, a. No, no, no. Just a second. You were asking forty-five. I was asking 45 for the apartment, but because through a friend, I said, I'll give it to you for four. Had you rented the apartment before? Yes. To whom? To a lady who moved to Utah. How long had she been in the apartment? Three years. When did she leave? Uh, three, four, two months before this incident. So she left relatively soon, so, maybe in May. Yeah. And how much was she paying in rent? 38. And you agreed with the defendant you wanted four. She says 37. I'm not sure I believe her. You finally fixed on 35, correct? Yes. Which is, according to you, $300 less than you were getting from your previous tenant. Correct. Who had been there. Well, that was nice of you, $3,500. And you were supposed to provide him with security deposit. How much? 3500 So the total Dem due would have been 6000 I'm going to do this my way. Okay, sorry. You were supposed to provide him with security deposit when you saw the apartment in July, because now you are, if you want to take the apartment, you want him to stop showing the apartment. This is before, this is before I got to LA, yes. The department. You went to see the apartment for in the June. first time in June. Yes. And in June, you said you'd take it. Correct. So you clearly wanted him to stop showing the apartment to other people. He, he, we were done, yes. Great. And how much money did you give him in June then? We, and I have the text messages. Uh, th There's a number, just a second. Well, that's a number. In June, I gave him nothing. So in June, you gave him nothing. June what did you come looking at the apartment? Because this is what it all okay. comes down. This is what the case all comes down okay. to, so that people aren't wondering out there what this case is all okay. about. On the evening you, I'm, of June I'm, 1st. I'm, 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 I'm speaking. I thought you asked me the date. No. I'm sorry. This is what the case is all about. In case anybody is wondering what the case is all about, Miss Gangley is suing the defendant for $10,000 because he reneged on an agreement to rent her an apartment. That's what you're suing him for, for your moving costs and everything else. That's what you're suing him for. Correct. You saw the apartment June 1st. You gave him no money. Correct. You signed no lease. Correct. You were moving into the apartment on what date? July 15th. Between June 1st and July 15th, how much money had you sent him? $1,000. On what date? The date that I sent the money was two days after he requested it, and it was July uh, 12th was one. Well, usually when you go and see an apartment, Miss Gangley, and you're not a child. Correct. I haven't rented an apartment in a long time, but I have a pretty fixed memory. You go and look at an apartment. You say, I like it. You go with the person who was renting the apartment. You sign a lease. You give them a check. You give them the date when the lease is going to be signed, and then you have a signed lease, and he has his security deposit, first month's rent. Sometimes they require last month's rent. In this case, what were you supposed to give him? A month's rent and how much security? At the, may I just tell from the beginning? No. Okay. Well, we didn't speak on... Just a second. You came and looked at the apartment, and because he was a friend of a friend... We talked only of a about the rent. ...of a friend of a friend of a friend, you gave him no money, and you asked him, you expected him to take his apartment out of circulation until you got there on July 15th, even though he gave you a rent that was less than what he was getting from his previous tenant. That's a pretty good deal. I asked you for a number. How much money 
were you supposed to give him for the apartment? How much security? He requested zero security deposit when I met him. He told I asked me in you... July to, it, that a $3,000 security deposit. $3,000 and your month's rent. Correct. Which was $3,500. Correct. So $6,500 altogether, and you had already given him $1,000. Correct. So you owed him $5,500 that he agreed, nice guy, so far, really nice guy, gave you a cheaper rent than what was the going rate that you understood because you moved into Beverly Hills. He was giving you less rent than what he was getting from his former tenant. He held the apartment for you for six weeks for no money, $1,000. No money. By the way, he, he wasn't gave ready just for a it. second, just a second. He gave you the $1,000 back by the way. Yes. Did you cash that check? Yes, I did. Oh, then you're one and done. When you went to Wells Fargo and got the check for $5,000, you went there knowing that you owed him $5,500. Correct. Miss Gangley, you're a hustler. Kathleen Ganley claims apartment owner Ellie Benarin owes for moving expenses and hotel costs after refusing to rent his apartment after she paid him a deposit. Now, I'm not finished yet. Then, according to you, you got there with your son from Arizona with a U-Haul and a mover, and you had with you a cashier's check for $5,000. Now, when did you get that cashier's check for $5,000? July 14th. Where did you get the cashier's check for $5,000? Wells Fargo in Arizona. Is that where you have your bank account? Yes, it is. And when you went to Wells Fargo and got the check for $5,000, you went there knowing that you owed him $5,500. Correct. Your excuse for that is that you were going to pay him the rest by some Zelle account. Which is how he had Just, requested it. No. Show me how he requested, on July 14th, show me how he requested payment by a Zelle account. I want you, that's a simple, He didn't simple, request simple, it on July 14th. Simple, 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 simple. He didn't, simple, he didn't simple, request simple, simple. it then. Miss Gangley, listen, you're a hustler. No, ma'am, You're a I'm hustler, not. you're a hustler. No. What you could have done very easily was the day before you were there, you got there on July 14th, when you went to Wells Fargo and got a cashier's check, you get a cashier's check for $5,500. That is as good as cash, like that. Instead, you talked him down with the rent, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. May you I show owed him, you the text? You owed him, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. You owed him, it's his apartment. He wants to rent it. He is in a position of wanting to rent his commodity. He had somebody who was ready, willing, and able, he thought, to rent that commodity. It's not that he had somebody else in the wings to rent your apartment. He was renting his apartment to you. You were, in my view, trying to get away with the 500 bucks then. At that moment. Why would I drive a U-Haul and pay all that money there to try to save $500? I would love just to show you. I would love to see, Kevin, I would love to see that on or about July 14th, he said to you, give me a cashier's check for 5,000 and pay the rest by Zelle, by, by some other commodity. It Here's doesn't make you, sense. This is the date. What's the date? That he requested the deposit. No, no, no. What's the date when he told July you? July 6th me... is when he requested the deposit. Just by Zell. Just a second. July 6th, he requested the deposit by Zell. Did you send it? I, Zell only allows you to send. No, 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 no don't send. tell. They... I sent the max possible on a day. <laughs> Zell only allows you who to spend $500. Gives, who gives a rat's behind what they said to you? Just like it's now a month. Please send me the deposit. So you say, well, I'll give him $1,000. I'll give him $500. That's what he's asking for. But then July 14th, when you went there, you were still $500. I'm not interested in looking at anything 
except that he said to you, when you got there July 15th, give me a cashier's check and a Zelle payment for $500. That's what you decided to I do. I sent him a text, and he responded with an emoji of thumbs up. It's, it's a, he responded to the text saying, yes, You're a fine. hustler, madam. I'm not a hustler. And you are not getting $10,000 from won't, this man. And you won't look at the evidence? I'm absolutely going to look at the evidence. I'm telling you that you're a hustler. OK, well, here's because the I'm evidence. I'm telling you you're a hustler. Well, because you're wrong, sir. I'm telling you, sorry. Kevin, you can get it. I'm telling you you're a hustler. Because, show her that. Because on July 14th, when you went to Wells Fargo, I, as a normal person, knowing that he wanted a deposit on July 6th, I said, you know what? I'm going all the way there. I'm packing up my son. I'm packing up my U-Haul. Wells Fargo is where I do my banking. They also have Wells Fargo here. So you didn't take out your last dollar. I'm going to get a bank check so he knows he has the money, because now he's been waiting for it for six weeks. And I'm going to give him a bank check for $5,500, because that's what I owe him. You didn't do that. You gave him $5,000. And I have to say to myself, why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's like saying, I have $5,000 in cash, and I'm going to give you $5,000 in cash, and I'm going to give you $500 in a note that I'm not getting right then and there, but I'm going to move my things into the apartment, and then I'm there. And then when I have the other $500, I'm going to give you the other $500. And in addition, when he said, listen, if this is the way I'm going to do business with you, you gave me $5,000 in a cashier's check, it's $500 short. I don't want to start with a tenant like this right away. No, that's I why know we agreed to it ahead of time. Here's your $1,000 back that you gave me. You took the check and you cashed it. And that was finished. He said, I don't want you as a tenant. You have a signed lease by both of you? I have a signed, no. No, so you have no lease. So, you see, if you're in Arizona and you want to send him his deposit that he wants over, and people do that all the time. They buy property in the mail. They buy property over email. They have DocuSign. You can do all that between June 1st and July 15th. You chose not to do that. You're not entitled to any money. That's not true. He's not responsible for your having to find another apartment which cost you more money. You're a grown woman, and if you saw an apartment that was a bargain, you hop on it. Kathleen Ganley has accused apartment owner Ellie Bonarin of refusing to rent his apartment after she paid a deposit. Ellie says he changed his mind and refunded her deposit. Now, on what date did he send you the lease? He sent me... Just a second. I'm going to go to you. On what date did you send her the lease? July 10th. You sent her the lease on July 10th? 10th. Did you send it by email? By email, and I told her to respond with the... sign the lease and send it back. Or at least I acknowledge she got the lease. I didn't hear from her. You have so, all the text there. Can I see the email that you sent her with the lease? Do you have it with you? I have it on my phone. Can I pull it off to my phone? Yes. So when you got the lease, you changed it. I made an edit, as I said in the text to him there. So you changed it yes. and initialed it? Yes. And he didn't send it on July 10th. When did he send it? I gave him my email on July 13th. Sorry, apologize, July 13th, yes. Here is the email, here is the text. Mm -hmm. And I'll open it for you. In the evening, the day before we were loading to move. And I wrote, please acknowledge receiving it. I never heard from her. We spoke on the phone, sir. You're not entitled to any money. That's not true. Well, I'm telling you that you're not entitled to any money. But you, you haven't heard my story or seen the evidence. What I have I'm not. What I'm telling you, madam, is the following. You have no lease to his apartment. We had a verbal you, no, contract. No, you had no lease to his apartment, and you accepted in satisfaction 
of having no lease, $1,000, which is what you gave him, and you cashed it. And he's not responsible for your having to find another apartment which cost you more money. You had a responsibility. You're a grown woman. And if you saw an apartment that was a bargain, you hop on it. Say, I want my lease. I want to sign it. I want to give you the money that right now for it so I know it's mine and I know it's held. That's what you do as a grown-up. You didn't do that. You had the perfect opportunity to get a cashier's check for $5,500 the day before you went there. And you didn't. And you modified the lease before he signed it. So you had no lease. You had no written lease when there was supposed to be a written lease. This wasn't a verbal month-to-month -month tenancy. This was not a verbal month-to-month -month tenancy. No, it was not. <sighs> right. It was a 12-month lease. That's a lease for a year or more has to be in writing. And not... I'm telling you, you did not have a written lease with him, and you failed to fulfill the terms of the lease by not bringing a sufficient amount of money with you. Your case is dismissed. No, man. We are done. No. I, I, Court is adjourned. We are just humor me done. to hear the We're story, done. please. We are We're done. done. No, I'm not We're going done. to do that. Oh, yeah, no. you are. Sir, well, then, then there's a breach of contract, just, yeah, right? Because phone. you told me we were going to hear, you were going to hear the case. I heard my You did not hear. No, I, no, I won't go, no. The case is over. I'm not going. The case is over. Actually, I never got to speak. I'm not going. Well, I was very disappointed that I didn't get to explain the sequence of events. I think she made the right decision. Judge Judy knows what she's saying. So I'm extremely disappointed with her, her uh, decision there. When people born, uh, they're a gift to the world. She was the opposite. We com started communicating again in July. I reached out to him. She tried to get in with no money and Jen not to pay the rent, I was assuming. The deposit was not requested until the, the amount was never mentioned until the 10th of July. The straw that broke the camel's back, the $500, she did a mistake. I don't think he changed his mind. We hadn't talked about it. No, no, she say, here is 5,000 and I'll give you later another 500. And I said, I'm not accepting later 500. We have a chain of communications. He knew I was coming. She is a hustler. So I'm just curious, would you have felt any different about the plaintiff being a hustler if she had not cashed that $1,000 check that he had refunded her for what she had paid towards her deposit? I would still have thought that she was a hustler, but accepting the check back from him, I mean, if the check was given to secure, her argument was mm -hmm. given to secure the apartment, even though it wasn't the full amount that was necessary that he asked for the beginning of July, mm -hmm. and she ignored him. But since she took the check and cashed the check, that says to me, his obligation to her is finished. The fact that she had to go and find another apartment could have been very easily rectified. This is a man, he's a landlord. He has a commodity from which he makes money, which probably costs him maintenance and taxes that he has to pay for every month that the apartment lays fallow. Mm -hmm. He agreed because of a friendship with a mutual friend to rent this woman an apartment for less than it's going rate. Yeah. And he held it for a month. For no money. Really for no money. She got the lease. She made an alteration on the lease. She never sent it back. She never acknowledged that she had it. The day before she left Arizona, she went to the bank knowing that she owes him $5,500, and she took out a check for $5,000. Weird. And paid for a check for $5,000. You know, I've been in this business and heard these landlord and tenant things long enough to know, once she moved her things into that apartment, that $500 security deposit... Gone. He was never gonna see. He might have hounded her for it for a couple of months, and then he would have said, Forget about it. And she knew that. She knew that. That's what makes her a hustler. That check for $5,000, that cashier's check, instead of $5,500, says to me, hustler. Fair. And the icing on the cake is, he said, listen, I don't want you as a tenant in a place that I really want to rent. And you're here. And all your stuff is here. So it's very easy for me to let you move in. But I know, I'm a smart man, if I take this $5,000, I'm gonna have trouble with you ongoing. Complaints, rent, 
more complaints. What do I need this for? Here's your thousand dollars. I take it, I cash it, go find a motel, stay in it until you find an apartment. You're probably not going to find an apartment in Beverly Hills for $3,500. That's a two bedroom apartment, which is what he had. So when you do the wrong thing, courts aren't going to stand up for you. She did the wrong thing. He did the right thing, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And he did the right thing. He bent over backwards to accommodate this lady because of a friendship from, with a mutual friend. And she was trying to get a little bit extra. Well, it came back in a bitter in the behind. And I was more than happy to be accommodating. Yeah. Are you a victim of a scam? Go to judyjustice.tv. Hello, Judge. Case 1095, Boyston versus Wynn. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Boyston, how long do you and the defendant know each other? Oh, well over 20 years. Tell me where you met. Well, him and his father owned a gas station and I always like to do business with the small, small time business people, so. And? And I uh, hired him to work for me from time to time. What kind of work did you do? Well, we do a little bit of everything. I wash windows, that's my main job, but I do handyman job because I have 13 years experience in industrial maintenance and I have 13 years in build, building maintenance, so. And what kind of work do you do, sir? I do landscaping and detail cars and I'm a little, you know, handyman myself. Mr. Wynn, in August of this year, you borrowed a utility trailer from the plaintiff. Yes. Tell me why. Uh, I was helping a friend move and I have, I have a little trailer, but he was moving a, pr a probably five bedroom house and uh, I needed a bigger one so we could get more done. So I asked Don if I, if I could use his uh, 20 foot trailer compared to my uh, five foot trailer. Had you ever used that trailer before? No. But you have a trailer that's similar, but uh, smaller. Smaller, yes. When you're not using your trailer, where do you keep it? I have a driveway and I have a little spot on the side of the driveway. It's in the dirt, basically. I just park it right there. Do you do anything with your trailer to secure it? Oh, no. No, I just, every once in a while, I, I just lay it on top of the tree stump where it sits on, you know. Do the you have neck. a picture of it? I don't. I, I apologize. I don't have it. But I do have the house and I could, I mean, you could see where I would park it. Yeah, right here. I, I usually park it right there. Okay. Where is it? It usually parks here, right here. And whose two cars are these? The, those are mine. Well, mine and a friend. The blue one is yours? No, no, the red one was mine, and the blue one was a friend. Was the friend visiting you, is that why? Yes, yes. On the day that you took this photograph? Uh, on the day of that photograph, yes. And when was this photograph taken? Not too long ago, I mean, it was, after, after the incident. How much after? At that one. Yeah. No, don't say anything. To be honest, that's a Google, Google search picture. Uh, that, I only want you to be honest with me, yeah, Mr. That's Wynn. honest. That Mr. was just Wynn, a Google search I, picture. This is a Google search picture of? Which, of my house. Those cars are old cars, two, three years dated back. But I, I took it to show you where I parked my trailer. So what you're saying to me is, this is not a, a picture that you currently took. Let us start afresh. I, I apologize. Because when something, I don't know, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up if I think somebody is pulling my leg. Do you uh, understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to pull your leg, uh -huh. Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Terrific. This is what the case is about. Is your claim that you loaned your friend this big trailer. It was a 16 foot trailer, not a 20. I said, oh, big trailer. Big difference in price too. To 16 to 20? Yeah, the 20s are way I expensive. I don't know. Okay. You'll show me that when you show me the receipt for the trailer. Okay. 
He asked you if he could borrow it to help a friend move. He did that on what date in August? He asked on August 14th, 2021, with a text message, and uh, I ignored it. And then the next day, he called me, and he begged to borrow my trailer. And okay, so the next day, on... he called you. So yes. he first sent a text, which you ignored. August 14th was what day? Saturday. Saturday. And then the next day, he called you. Yes, on a Sunday. And you took his phone call? And you said that he could, in fact, borrow the trailer. Nope, I did not. I you hung said up no. On him. I said nope. Hung up. Could you explain why to me if he was such a nice guy? Because I didn't want my fender dented. I didn't want damage done to my trailer. I never in the world thought that it would come up missing. Just a second. Had you ever loaned him your trailer before? I've loaned him a car dolly before. What is that? It's a deal that you pull a car, front of a car up on, and you can haul it off. And when did you loan that to him? Probably three months before that. Did he return it in okay condition? Yes, he did. Okay, so you didn't have any history of letting him borrow something from you where he acted irresponsibly with it? No, no, he brought it back. So on what date did you finally say, okay, you can borrow my trailer? Well, after he texted me and said, we'll be fine, that was his last little prod to tug at my little heart, and I finally texted him back on the same day. May I which... see it? Yes. When he says on August 14th, hey, Don, can I use that trailer today? I'll grab parking slabs for you, too. I think we'll be fine. And you respond that on the 15th, if you want to use my trailer, come and get it. Tell me about these parking slabs that he said he would get for you. If I never got them, but I'm thinking it's, but, but, it's parking curbs, like you pull up at a grocery store, it's, but they were concrete, heavy, and he just needed to get rid of them and... I could probably use them for something. I'll grab parking slabs for you, too. That's not something that's like my saying, you know, I'm going to grab two light fixtures exactly, and signage for you. I, there, something went on before this, so there must have been a history with these parking slabs between the two of you. But you never responded to him about the parking slabs, at least here. What you showed me, did you tell him you wanted the parking slabs? Oh, he, and a phone call, I'm sure I said, if, if you want to get rid of them, I, I can take them, I guess. I got what five you know acres. What talking about? So that you don't run into the garage door or, say, a side of a house, perhaps? My, my house is surrounded with trees, and I make parking spots as we need them. Okie dokie. Mr. Wynn, what part of I can tell when somebody's peeing on my leg and telling me it's I'm, raining, don't you understand? Oh, I, I understand. I don't. I know you're good. I know you're smart. Well, then and I don't. I'll, you must think to... I'm stupid. <laughs> Donald Earl Boydston says his former friend, Tam Wynn, owes for the cost of his trailer after it was stolen while in Tam's possession. Okay, so you borrowed the trailer, you used the trailer on the 15th of August. Is that right, Mr. Wynn? Yes. And then, when you were finished using it, according to you, you parked it in a neighbor's driveway. Yes, like I said, I've, I've lived in that neighborhood since 94, so I know the people around there and the next door neighbor, I know him well too, so. He had no problem with me parking. No, not, not that he has no problem. Okay. Did you call him, text him, write him, go to his home and ask if you could park the trailer there? He was working... Just, that's either I... I did. What is his name? Oh, I don't even know him by name. Oh, then I don't <laughs> believe your story. Let's understand that. I've I known think... him from 1994. Is that what he said? Something no, no, no. From I, I lived there you... since 94. Something about knowing I, all of his neighbors. I lived in that neighborhood since 94, so I know the people around there and the next door neighbor. I know him well, too. So you know him well, too, but you don't know his name? No, Is I don't know his name. Is that what you're saying to me, uh, Mr. Wynn? I, I, you know, I don't Do you, know. His don't, name? I'm not good with names. Yes, ma'am, I don't know his name. I'm being honest. Who is this? <laughs> it's Sandra. Who is it? It's my, my wife. Sandra, what's your next door neighbor's name? <laughs> I'm not sure, neither. He's remodeling the house. He just bought the house. So he just actually moved there. No, 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 no. I'm not. He's the owner of the house. Well, the yeah. owner. He was renting. Yeah. He was renting to, to these, uh, uh, I guess, uh, disabled people, and they moved out since the house was kind of falling apart. And he's back 
uh, is uh, what remodeled. you're telling me, Mr. Wynn. Nobody was living in the house next door, so you parked it in the driveway. Is yes, Let's, Your Honor. Yes. I just want. Is what you're telling me, nobody was living in the house next door, it was being renovated, so you used the driveway to park the trailer? Because I usually park my Do car. Yes, I don't Honor. care yes, whether you usually park your wife there. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wynn, what part of, I can tell when somebody's peeing on my leg and telling me it's I'm, raining, don't you understand? Oh, I, I understand. I don't. I know you're good. I know you're smart. Well, then and I don't. You must think to... I'm stupid. No, I don't. And think your stupid. wife must just... think I'm stupid. No, no. Because I've been living there. I know all my neighbors since 1994, and all of a sudden there was a disabled family who was living there, and now somebody else bought it. But I knew I didn't have to ask him because I knew him well. I know all my neighbors. Do you understand how ridiculous all that sounds? Yes, yes. I do. Okay. I do. So the truth is always easier. The that, truth is that... easier. Let's start this process again. When you finished using the trailer, you parked it in the driveway next door because nobody was there. I knew no one lived there. Okay. Wasn't that easy? Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Wynn, this is what happened. The next day, you open your eyes, you go outside, no trailer. No trailer. He said, I loaned you my trailer. Where's my trailer? And you say somebody must have stolen it. Well, I thought he actually came and got it. Well, but he didn't. Yes. What you th thought was irrelevant because it didn't happen. And both of you filed a police report, I assume? I had to go to the hospital because one of my family members had COVID. So when he called me on the phone and asked me if Just I'd... a second. One of your family members had COVID and you had to go to the hospital? Yeah, it was... And he was trying to give up. And they needed my wife to, to go there. And she wanted me to go and... If my wife tells me I gotta go, I'm gonna go. All I wanna know is, did you ever make a police report? I did make a police report. That's yes, what I wanna know. Yes. Do you have it? Yes, I do. I'd like to look at it. Sarah, take a look at a 16-foot Terry trailer. From what I can tell, production of Terry trailers ended after 2009. Okay, so they stopped production in 2009 on the 16-foot Terrys. From what I could tell, yeah. Okay. In what year did you buy this trailer, sir? Best I can recollect, it was 2007. And that's a heavy-duty trailer, not just a regular uh, lawnmower okay. trailer. So you bought it in 2007, so the trailer was about 15 years old. Yeah. Sarah, take a look and get a price for me on a 15-year-old Terry trailer. First of all, Mr. Wynn. Yes, ma'am. Either I have to give you an introduction to the truth. No, ma'am. Uh, let me explain. When you spoke to the police, you initially said to them that with the permission from the neighbor at 9th Street, he parked the trailer on their concrete driveway. So first you gave me a baloney story, then you gave me I assume a legitimate story when you told me you didn't know who was living there because people moved out. When the police came, you told them that you had permission of the neighbors, which is clearly not true because you just told me a moment right. ago you didn't know who the neighbors were. You told the police that you had purchased the trailer the day before and the purchase amount of the trailer was $800. So unless this police officer is psychotic, he has certain details in here that he must have gotten from somebody. He says he got them from you. Whenever I told Don, and he was, he was obviously uh, irate at that time, whenever I told him it was gone and I didn't know where it was, he told me, well, you borrowed it, you deal with it, you make the police report. Just a second, what do you mean you bought it? I borrowed it. Oh, you borrowed, you didn't say you borrowed it. You told the police. No, no, no. No, you I, I was told... Talking to, I was saying when I talked to Don and told him about the incident, he told me I borrowed it. It was in my possession. I need to make the police report. So I had to make it... I don't like care if you made trailer. the police report and say I borrowed my friend's truck. I parked it on a concrete slab next door and I borrowed it from him. So I'm making the police report because it's gone. Instead of giving the police a story that you bought it the day before for eight hundred dollars, I don't know why. I, you don't know why. I said I'm going to introduce you. We're going to have a party. I'm going to introduce you to the truth.
It's so much easier when you get the story straight the first time, then you don't have to remember. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a long memory. I've no, just a second. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a long or good memory. Donald Earl Boydston has accused his former friend, Tam Wynn, of not securing his trailer, allowing it to be stolen. Okay, it's so much easier when you get the story straight the first time, then you don't have to remember. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a long memory. I've no, just a sec. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a long or good memory. Okay, you have any price at all? No, it's too hard to tell with the different specs and years, okay. and I don't uh, have enough. Two th to this was a 2007. Yeah, I know. And do you have any price range at all? I mean, in the police report that the plaintiff filed on the 18th, the police officer also, probably not a psychotic, says he was contacted by you in reference to the missing trailer. He said the defendant had parked it in a vacant lot, unattended contacted him the next day. Don described the trailer as a 16-foot black Terry trailer. So unless the police officer was also, again, psychotic, you told him it was a 16-foot trailer. Mm -hmm. Did you not correct me before and say it was a 20-foot trailer? I did correct you a while ago. Well, you should have corrected the police officer, too. No, he told you that it was not 20, that it was 16. 16. Okay. That's why I have her. Thank you. Okay, you told the police that it was valued at around $2,500. Yeah, that was before I did some mm -hmm. research. Well, that's what you told. So now I'd like to see, because he's clearly responsible. Yes. He I've was negligent. For a, he was negligent. I've got an estimate for a replacement trailer. I don't want a replacement trailer. This trailer is 15 years old. He told me he bought it don't, for 15. Just a second. Mr. Wynn, having trouble with you and the truth. Now we're going to fix a value on this 15-year-old trailer, not a replacement trailer. I also added gorilla lifts to it on the gate. You have what? Gorilla lifts on the gate. Do you have a receipt for the trailer? No, I, that's a divorce ago and many moons ago. 15 years ago? Yeah. Can you find not a replacement for the trailer? You're talking about a new replacement. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not buying you a new trailer well, for I'm a 15-year-old trailer. Well, not a new price either. Well, right. so I'm asking you, how do you expect me to value this 15-year-old trailer? He's clearly responsible for it. You told the police 2500 Now, did he ever tell you what he paid for that trailer? Yes, ma'am. Let's start with, when did he tell you how much he paid for the trailer? After the incident, he told me uh, he paid 1500 for it and added a uh, gorilla lift that was three or four or $500, something like that. But he told me 15 on the trailer. And he added a gorilla lift. Yeah, that's what he said. Where were you when you had this conversation? It was over the oh. phone. It was uh, basically he, him trying to get me to pay for it. Yes, so you had this conversation. You remember speaking to him about the payment for the trailer. Oh, we spoke in person, too. I don't know if we said that on the phone or in person, but... Oh, we didn't say okay. that much on, in well, person. Well, so then, I will ask you this question, Mr. Boyston. Did you, in fact, tell him that you paid $1,500 for the trailer and uh, then put on the gorilla lifts? I don't recall saying that, but... Well, he does. I don't recall he, saying that, but because, I may have. Yeah, you may have. I may have. Well, if you may have... That suggests to me you wouldn't have said that if you didn't know that that was either the price that you paid for it or the ballpark figure. Do you remember telling him how much you paid to have the gorilla lifts put on? And I don't know what gorilla lifts are. It's just spring assist on the gate, so it's not so hard to lift. Okay. Do you remember when you did that? A couple years ago. Do you remember how much it cost you? I think it's two fifty. So fifteen hundred and two fifty is seventeen fifty. That's what you paid for the trailer. If that's what you told him, since you don't remember and he does remember, and it could have been, which suggests to me that it's probably what you said to him, that's $1,700. The, now, the problem you, with that is, Your Honor, is you can't replace that for $1,750. Of course Even you used, you can't replace it for that. Of course they're going for They're going from 25 to 35 I don't know. I mean, if you buy, let's say you bought an ounce of silver and the price of silver goes up to $50 an ounce, are you going to sell it for what you gave for it? Are you going to sell it for what it's actually worth? Well, let me tell you this. Think about an insurance company when you insure your car and your car is stolen and you paid for your car $100,000 15 years ago and you have both collision and liability. 
Do you think that the insurance company is going to pay you $100,000 for your car? Are they going to pay you the current value of the car? Well, I understand that, but <laughs> the trailers... But the trailers are going up. I mean, if your car is worth more than you gave for it... Oh, if things increase in value, yes. If you bought a car that appreciates in value, then the insurance company would have to pay the appreciated value. But he's not buying you a new trailer. Well, I'm not asking for a new trailer. I'm just asking for a price that will get me close to where I can take and add some more money to it and get... Because if you buy a used one, chances are you're going to buy a stolen one. Well, that's possible. Maybe you buy your own. 1750 judgment for the plaintiff. Court is adjourned. I mean, I wasn't trying to lie one bit. Anytime you got that little gut feeling that says, say no, stick to it. I called him as soon as I noticed it was gone. He said, it's gone. I said, but well, you better report it. Well, I hope he's happy now and I, I realize I didn't steal it. Something's better than nothing. I actually disagreed with you on that one. If you're already making the leap say to say that the defendant did not exercise the proper duty of care and was therefore negligent and allowed this criminal act of the stealing of another's trailer, I think that the plaintiff should be made whole. He did nothing wrong. He was not negligent. He, out of the kindness of his heart, lent his trailer to someone who he thought he knew to be responsible. And with this judgment, from the little research that I had time to do out on the bench, I know that he will not be able to replace or get a similar trailer to his own for the judgment that you made. And I think that he should have been made whole with not a brand new trailer, but at least the value of a used trailer that he could go and purchase and then he would be made whole again. It's an interesting argument. The proximate cause of his not having his trailer is a criminal act, not committed by the defendant, mm -hmm. but committed by a third person. Does the fact that it was parked in somebody else's driveway, did that make access easier for the criminal could have. I really believe that what he paid for it 15 years ago was $1,500. He just put in the special equipment and he said about 250 Well, then I've at least made him financially whole. But I understand and respect your position and we'll do a little post-trial research. Want justice? Go to judyjustice.tv.